In this video, I'm gonna show you how I managed to create a dedicated setup for my live streams and content creation that I can also use for productivity when I need it. When I first started building the setup, it was just a gaming setup and I found it's become quite underutilized because you know I don't really have a lot of time to play games these days. But it would be a shame to waste the setup and just let it collect dust, right? There are two reasons why I needed to make some changes. The first reason is the fact that I don't do just YouTube. I do, I run another business as well. And as part of that, I run quite a few virtual meetings pretty much on a daily basis. During these meetings, I like to be as productive as possible and not have to be switching between setup. And I don't really like the idea of having too many monitors. And the second reason is for you, is for YouTube. I really need to do more live streams. One of my goals for the channel in 2020 for is to be more consistent with live streams and podcasts as well. And the biggest problem I've always had, and I'm sure you're the same if you try to stream, is the time it takes to set up. It's a massive ordeal, right? So it made a lot of sense to make a few changes here and there to allow me to do live streaming, remote video meetings, as well as my productivity work. I'll be showing you how I use the setup in practice, and I hope that some of these changes might inspire you if you're looking to build or upgrade your own setup. The PC itself is a custom-built Intel i9-13900K, and to be honest with you, it's been quite overkill for what I needed. But the good news is, even though I built this almost a year ago now, it's still going strong and I don't really need to upgrade it. I went with the MSI Supreme X RTX 4090 graphics card, again, definitely overkill for my needs, but should still be rocking for another couple of years at the very least. And when I do hop onto my Steam gaming library, you know, I shouldn't need to worry about performance. The case is the Height Y60. I love this thing, you know, I know it's probably not for everyone, but I just love the fact that there's lots of space in this like fish tank design. For someone who doesn't really build a lot of PCs, having that extra space in there was really useful. And if you're interested, Height just released a new one as well with a built-in display, but I quite like it like this in this more kind of minimal design. For cooling, I got the Corsair their IQ H150i uh, Elite, and I added some Lee and Lee streamer cables as well to add some nice lighting to the setup. All of the lighting is controllable via software, which is great, so you can change the colors depending on you know what you're doing or your current mood. And don't worry, I'll be putting the specs and the links all down below for you. And I'll share a link to the build itself if you wanna check that out in more detail. All right, when it comes to the changes, the first big change here is the monitor. I still have the Alienware 3423DW. <laughs> Gotta love their naming, right? But the Alienware was named the best gaming monitor by a lot of people in the last couple of years. And only now in 2024, just, you know, CES just finished, only now we're starting to see some monitors that actually perform better with more brightness, higher refresh rate and updated specs. But I've been trying out the Samsung Odyssey Arc 55 inch in this setup and I gotta say, this monitor is playing a huge part in how productive I can be in this space. Not only is it huge, but it does crazy things like, you know, it goes completely vertical if you want to. But even in this horizontal mode, it's been fantastic for me. I'm way more productive now when I'm not gaming. There are some quirks with the Arc and I will be doing a full video on it soon. But I love how despite this huge size, I get to save a lot of space now. And surprisingly, how good it's been for productivity. The great news if you're interested in this monitor is that right now the price is less than half of what it was a year ago when it was launched. And the reason for that is that they've got a second gen. The one I've got here is the first gen. And as far as I can tell, the only difference that's worth calling out anyway, is that you can only have one HDMI input at once and there's no display port. This could be a deal breaker for you if you wanted to run your Mac or PS5 at the same time and be able to switch quickly between them. But for over a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds here in the UK, it's a big difference. And that small inconvenience of having to, you know, get a switcher or change cables may make sense for you. I will also be reviewing the second gen soon and I'll put them side by side maybe as a comparison. But as far as I can tell right now, that is the main difference. And the same response time as well. So for gaming, you're not gonna see a lot of difference between the two gens. As I said, there are newer and much higher specs out there now in 2024. And I myself have tried a few Samsung displays recently and I gotta say, this is just lovely for gaming. There's definitely something to be said about this curvature and how immersed you feel when you're playing. This is not my first curved monitor. I did review the G8, I believe, last year. And if you want to check out all the monitors that I reviewed, I'll leave a link down below to a playlist for that. Whether I'm playing racing games or first-person shooters, this is just phenomenal. I don't really do video editing in this, in this setup, but this display is a bit of a jack of all trades. It worked well with that as well. I can do some graphic work design if I want to, like on Lightroom and Photoshop. Unlike the Alienware, which is not really meant to be used for things like admin work or spreadsheets and things like that, the Odyssey Arc is actually perfect for that situation because of all this extra space that you get. I'm not saying the Alienware is bad now, don't get me wrong, but for a long session of crunchy numbers or writing, this monitor is 
is much better suited. Oh, and if you're wondering, you may have seen this in my previous videos, just sitting here on the desk. I do use this in that setup as well. This here is the Div Room Times Gate, which is a really nice kind of decorative part of the setup. You know, it's fully customizable via the app. You can create your own like pixel art animations in there, or you just grab one that's been created for you. It's more than just a bit of decoration though. You can use it to track your favorite stocks even, or you know, in my case, I track how my YouTube channels are doing. Or if you prefer something a little bit more subdued, it can be just a nice clock as well. It doesn't have batteries or anything like that. It's just connected via USB-C. And I just think it's an awesome gift idea as well. It comes in this really nice gift box. And there's a girly version as well, if you want to, that's a bit more like pink. But yeah, really cool stuff. Now, as well as the monitor, the cameras in my setup is where the other big change has happened. I've installed this really cool camera from Obspot, which is the new addition to the setup. This is the Tiny2 camera. And it's kind of a multi-purpose camera, really, you know, it's a 4K camera. Honestly, I wish this was available in 2020 because, you know, at the time, I was desperate looking for something to work from home, right, like everybody else. And there was nothing really decent in the market. This has got fantastic design, doesn't look ugly on top of your monitor, and it's absolutely brilliant in low light situations. The only downside is on a bigger monitor like this, or even in a normal kind of 32 inch that I've got as well, and when it's not in use, I can just put it away. You can, of course, put the camera on top of the monitor and adjust the angle, but it'll be a little strange that you're gonna have to look up quite a bit, right? Because this is such a huge screen. Now for live streaming, sometimes I use this camera, which is a bit of a faff to move around and kind of, you know, have batteries and things like that and cables all over the place. So Obspot actually just released Tail Air, which for my live streams will be even better. This Tiny2 is great as well for quick work meetings, but the tail layer is where things get a little bit more serious for live streaming. It's actually designed for live streaming really and you know there are so many cool options here. It's a PTZ or PTZ camera in a pan, tilt and zoom and it's brilliant. You know with just one camera you can get multiple angles or you can do what I'm doing here which is having a multicam setup and you can take this externally. It's got tripod mounts, not a lot of cables involved, just one USB-C cable, a micro SD card slot, and also a microphone port as well. I'm using this for my live streaming on YouTube, but I can see this being very useful for things like live music recording, places of worship setups, sports, it's also got that great AI auto tracking that we already have on the Tiny2 with some additional features like animal tracking and the gestures controls as well as updated. I'm only scratching the surface here and I'll make sure to do kind of a, a full review of this and I'll share more details in there. But I hope what you've seen already today gives you an idea of how good this thing is. Now, one of the most important part of the setup is my gaming chair. This is the Secret Lab Titan gaming chair. And you've probably seen this in all my videos for the past year. This chair, honestly, has been a revelation for me. It's so comfortable and it looks great too. I never really saw the fascination with gaming chairs in general, but Secret Labs and all the products, you know, they seem to have evolved so much and you're able to find some great designs now. Out of the box, it was super easy to put together. The packaging was top quality too, and the instructions were very easy to follow. Once you set it up, you can adjust the tension, the backrest. One of my favorite things about this chair is that they really go quite some way down. This will suit any playing style. I love that it comes with this magnetic cushion here for your head. Such a nice touch and the material feels great too. Obviously this chair is fantastic for gaming, but I find it great for whenever I'm having a break as well. It's such a nice chair for just sitting and relaxing, extremely comfortable. The armrests on the Titan are fully adjustable too, as you can see here, not just from my height and length, but also how narrow or wide you want them. I went for this lighter blue color here, but there's so many cool designs and colors. There's a link to the Titan down below. Definitely check them out because they might have a deal on them right now. And if you're watching this from a TV, just pause the video and scan the QR code here. And talking about comfort and ergonomics, this is the Hexcal wrist pad and desk pad. The wrist pad here, is one of my favorites. They're from the same company that makes this beauty over here, which is the Hexcal Studio. Again, I've reviewed this before. So I'm really happy that in this setup, everything kind of goes together. The desk mat and the wrist pad is sold as a bundle. And it doesn't just look good, you know, it feels amazing as well. They connect together by magnet, so it doesn't slide around when you're using it. Superb quality as well. The leather feels really, really soft. The cushion is very, very nice. I've been using this for like six months now, not a single mark on it, and it's just lovely. Two story. I sometimes carry this wrist mat home, just you know, if I'm planning to do some like long editing from home. Yeah, this is a lifesaver really. If you have like carpal tunnel syndrome, this is awesome. The Hexcal Studio is basically the centerpiece of my setup really. You know, I like how grown up it looks. I had it for a year now and I have no intention of replacing it. It does make things a little bit difficult with the screen, right? Because it elevates the display a bit. And this monitor that I've got doesn't need any further elevation, right? It's already quite 
by high ups. The Hexcom, it just looks like a stand, but it has quite a few hidden features as well. Loads of ports. This is awesome for power cable management. It provides great lighting as well from warm to cool light, which definitely helps. And I actually prefer it to the actual monitor lights, you know, the ones that you put on top of the monitor. These are much better for me because it doesn't reflect on the monitor. Plus, if I'm honest, it just looks really modern and I just like that look. The keyboard I was using before was this Glorious Ice full-size keyboard. Lovely keyboard, feels amazing. And it's great if you like the, the numpad, but I've just recently changed to a smaller Keychron Q65. They just released this one. It's awesome. I don't get any kickbacks from sales on this, by the way. I just love how it sounds, how it looks. Fairly hefty as well, and I'm really loving this. It comes with the Mac and Windows keycaps and all the tools that you need to replace them, including tools to replace all the switches if you want to later on. I went with the Gatron Jupiter banana switches, and they sound lovely. Don't take my word for it, though. Yeah, I could listen to that all day. And the mouse I'm rocking in this setup used to be the MX Master 3S, uh, the Logitech one, but I'm only using that mouse now in my editing setup. But here in this setup, I've got another Logitech. This is that gaming mouse, the G502X. Awesome as well, really light, no latency whatsoever, you know, really great for gaming. When I game, I actually use a glorious mouse pad too, and I come a big one. I just love how I can really move around without knocking anything over. The hex cow looks better. But when I'm gaming or streaming, I really need that extra real estate for the mouse. The Hexcal takes care of pretty much all the power in this setup, as I said, and connecting everything together here is my absolutely favorite dock, which is the Thunderbolt 4 dock, the TS4 from CalDigit. This thing is an absolute beast of a docking station, right? You can cope with anything. I never had a TS3. I used to use uh, like an OWC one, but with the TS4, it made a lot more sense. There's so many ports, you know, I do a lot of editing on the go as well. And I've been using this NVMe enclosures as well and external SSDs. So right now for my on-the-go setup, I'm using about 10 to 12 terabytes spread across all these drives. For most of my video editing projects, I'm using footage from previous videos as well. So I do need to connect them all up and use the footage from them. So having fast throughput to my MacBook when I'm editing is super important. And the TS4 just doesn't disappoint. I actually have two of them, one here in the studio and another one at home. Yeah, I just love them. So yeah, I can't recommend them enough. You get 18 ports in total on the TS4, 98 watt charging, which means you know, you're gonna be fine using even a big laptop like the MacBook Pro. It supports one 8K display at 60 Hertz, or two 4K monitors at 60 Hertz. I'll put a very usable table here for you that I got from their website so you know you can see exactly how many monitors it can support and the refresh rates as well depending on your OS. We get a micro SD and SD 4.0 slot as I said and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port as well. It has an audio jack at the front plus another audio in and out at the back which is really convenient. The one at the front is like a combo port, but you can only use one audio input at a time. If you've got both connected, you will default to the front one. The host connection, which is the one that you connect to the computer, is right here at the back, which is super nice and you know, very convenient from a cable management perspective. Plus you've got two more Thunderbolt 4 ports, which gives you 40 gig each. It's got a display port here if you want as well, and a data connection via USB-C here on this port too. The most complete and reliable dock I've used for sure. I know Thunderbolt 5 is being bundled around and CES has kind of shown some products in there, but it's way too early to tell, but I really can't recommend this one enough. For my audio interface, I went back to the Focusrite Scarlett. You know, I had the 4i4 before, and I sold it when I got the Rodecaster Pro, but I really missed it in the setup. You know, the Rodecaster is great, but it's just too big for a desk, you know? So I got it again, but this time I went for the 2i2. It's just an awesome interface, very underrated in my opinion, and very affordable as well. The microphone in this setup is the Shure MV7, which I really like, and I've, I've used this, this bad boy for ages. This is the Shure SM7B, but I like the MV7 because, you know, no frills, plug and play, it just it sounds awesome as well. The SM7B sounds way better in my opinion, but it just needs quite a bit of management, right? It needs proper cabling, it needs, you know, a bit of power as well. The MV7 is just more convenient. For example, you can control the volume on the mic itself and it has this convenient mute switch as well, so, you know, great for meetings. The boom arm is okay, the one I'm using at the moment. I wanted something different and I got this Gator Frameworks, but it's just not as flexible as I'd like. You know, I'm, I'm looking around for other options. They do look good though. And when it comes to my headphones, it's one part of the setup that I'm not 100% happy with. I was gonna recommend you the Rode NTH100. Unfortunately, both sides broke, you know, on the sides. It, yeah, I mean, I use them a lot, 
but unfortunately I just can't recommend them based on durability. To be fair to Rode, I posted this on Twitter and or X, right? And they promised to fix it for me or replace it, I guess, but it's just a faff with customer support. So I need a bit of time to get it sorted, but I don't think it will be fully resolved, right? Because they're probably just gonna give me the same one fixed. They do sound fantastic. They're extremely comfortable, which is why I use them a lot. But until Rode fixes this durability issue on the, on the little clips, I simply can't recommend it. So if you see other videos recommending this, just be aware of that because I know I'm not alone in this issue. So for now, I'm looking around for headphones and whilst I find a decent pair or get mine fixed up, I'm alternating between the AirPods Max and my Biodynamics 770 Pros. Both sound great, but I don't know, they're not modern enough anymore for me. And you know, there's obviously pros and cons with a Bluetooth headset versus a, a cabled one. I'll make sure to update you here, you know, to, to let you know which one I ended up with. The speakers I've got here are from KRK. I love them. These are the Rocket 5s and my gosh, they sound good. They used to be on the desk itself and they're totally like bookshelf size, right? But I moved them to these stands now just to try something different and they look great. And more importantly, they sound fantastic. I've been trying out some different speakers recently, but I keep coming back to these, just awesome sound. For gaming, listening to music, watching content, yeah, absolute bangers. Now the Hexcow Studio has wireless charging as well built in, very discreetly put on top of it as well, which is really nice, but I quite like to see my device while charging. So I use this three-in-one charger from Cooksu, which is awesome. I think it's Cooksu, how you say it. This charger is quite small and it folds away nicely as well, which is perfectly from my space saving perspective. When I'm not using it, it just goes in the drawer here. Also from the same brand is the tablet holder. This is probably one of my favorite accessories that I got in the last year. Feels very sturdy, the most sturdy stand that you'll find. I haven't seen anything like this before. It looks awesome. And just like the three-in-one charger from the same brand, it can be put out of the way very easily when you're not using it. So if you do use your tablet a lot, Oh, this thing is a must. I'm actually thinking of getting a second one as well from my home setup because they're just so useful. I hope I fulfilled the promise in this video. And if you saw anything today that inspired you, I have links to all the stuff down below. Using those links really helped me and it doesn't cost you anymore. In fact, some of them actually give you a discount as well. I really appreciate you taking the time today and I hope to see you soon. Cheers. Got my friends in the back on my roller. We gonna make it big one day. We gonna make it big, I say. We gon' make it be just stay in the, stay in the moon, stay in the